paint it, don't try to stick things on it or anything like that. We want a nice, clean computer back at the end of your two years at the, compute, at the academy because someone else is going to be using that computer. Now, what happens very often, students will put this without a cover or any protection. They'll put it in your backpack. And when you get here and you start getting books, you'll understand what I'm talking about. You will get more books than you've ever had in your life as far as classes. And everybody loads them all in their backpack and then they stick that, that laptop in there. What that does is push against the bottom of the laptop and it will harm or break the motherboard. And how much is that cost? $789. $789. So be careful. That's the reason we give you the little black carrying case. And if you notice, it's padded. So that helps protect it. This is just common sense. You know, don't sit out in a thunderstorm and use your laptop. Okay? Or out in the snow. Oh, here's a good one. I want you to tell everybody some war stories about things being dropped into the keyboard. We have to handle these things off because they're taping. <laughs> Every year, computers are brought to me. In fact, we had 18 just last year that were brought to me, either water damaged, soup, Gatorade, and when Gatorade's spilled on it, if it's a colored Gatorade, it colors the computer. So it came back to me all red inside. Now, the students and I talked a lot about this this morning. If it is water damaged, bring it to me and tell me it's water damaged. And before you even do that, if it's overnight, form a little tent with it. And then put a fan so it blows on the, right onto the keyboard. That will kind of hopefully dry it out so it doesn't corrode the motherboard. But once water gets inside the keyboard, it goes down into the motherboard and starts corroding the parts. Now, besides just eating and drinking, don't, girls, don't do your nails over the, mother, over the computer. They've been come back to me with nail polish or nail polish remover inside of it. Again, when the motherboard gets fried, it usually kills the RAM, the hard drive, and everything else. So we're totally trashing the computer. So you're looking at $1,100 cost right there. So just be very careful with food or drinks around your computer. Whoops, did I lose it? Okay. <coughs> Particularly in light of what he's saying, this makes sense, does it not? If you're going to clean the computer, uh, you spray something on a cloth and then clean it with that. And you said to use magic eraser, magic eraser to clean the outside of the computer. And the keyboard, you just spray Windex, or the, the uh, not the keyboard. <laughs> you didn't hear that the screen. Yes. Spray Windex on a cloth and then clean it. Okay? Okay, this is not a touch screen. Although it's nice and soft, don't go around and poke on it. No, it doesn't do any good. <laughs> you know why we put this on here, don't you? People go home for the extended weekends or they go home for a weekend and they leave, leave their computer. If you leave in, live in Evansville, there's no quick way to get that back because your parents are probably not going to drive 300 miles the next day to bring your computer back. And believe me, you'll need it for something almost every day that's required. So make sure you bring it back if you take it home. Yes? air or if it's really bad when you guys move in back in August, fill out the form and I'll replace the keyboard. But it's got to be pretty nasty. But if compressed air won't get it out, I'll replace it. What about the, the grime that gets that's, on the keyboard? It's on, you can just, that'll wipe right off with, with Magic Eraser. Yeah. With Magic Eraser. If that's what you're talking about, mine will get kind of that dirty, gritty stuff on it. Is that what you're talking about? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. 
Now, it's, this is very important because what happens, sometimes you will go off and you will leave this computer somewhere. All right? And if we don't know it's missing, all of you have watched CSI, right? You know how many days, yeah, <laughs> how many days, you know, the longer they're missing, the less chance that we have to find it. All right? Now, what happens is students get scared. They're going to kill me if we've lost my computer. Yes, we will, but we'll kill you worse later than we will sooner. All right? So let us know sooner if you've lost your computer because that gives us a better chance of finding it. Now, very often what will happen is that you will leave it in a classroom or you will leave it in the lounge and, and people will turn it into my office. That's where they always end up. That's the home for lost computers. <coughs> what we will do is call you down and I will ask you, where is your computer? Okay, and I expect you to tell me. You can't tell me it's in your room because I have it right here. Unless you've changed those little stickers with somebody, so don't get an idea of that. So if, if you do leave it somewhere, I give you one chance. I think everybody deserves one chance. But we write your name on a list. We write it in your blood on this list. And the second time then I take it, which is showing me you're not responsible. So we cannot afford to have these computers in irresponsible hands. So make sure you hang on to it. Now, they will, um, you want to talk about this one? Okay. The students and I talked about this earlier a little bit. You always want to keep enough hard drive space so when you're in class, you can still do all the assignments. RAM's not gonna be so much of an issue. All of them have 512. All of them will run everything you need in class. But like we talked about with dashboard, dashboard's going to eat your system resources up and the more you have on dashboard, the slower your computer's gonna run. So if your computer's running slow or you don't have enough space and you're trying to do an assignment and save it and it doesn't save, you're in trouble then. So you always gotta keep at least three gigabytes of space open on your computer. So when you guys get here and start downloading stuff, just make sure you still have some space. I don't know if this is the next one or not. Very often, uh, you'll be asked to bring it to class, to use it for some reason. A lot of times you'll be doing stuff on the web or you'll be meeting in groups in which you'll need a computer to compile the information that the group comes up with. And if you've been in our classrooms, you know they all have overhead projectors that you can just plug your computer in and everybody can see what you've come up with. But that means they have to have, they have to be charged. So what you need to do is make sure you plug it in and charge it each night so when you have it the next day and there's approximately, what, three or four hours of use with every charge. Now, please understand, this is an old building. Although it's been renovated, there's still not that many outlets in a classroom. So it's very important that you keep it charged so when you bring it to class. Now, sometimes teachers will say, don't bring it to class because they don't want that to interfere with what they're doing because what happens? People open the computer, the teacher's talking, ah, this is not exciting. I'm going to IM Susie across the room. Okay. Our teachers are, become, are very, becoming very skilled at identifying instant messaging eyes, so be careful with that. They'll probably, if you do bring it to class very often, they'll ask you to keep them shut until they ask you to open it up. So just be aware of the protocol. You know, be polite. Follow the rules. Let me let Mr. Grady talk about this one. Again, we covered this earlier too for, for the parents. Um, the laptops have all the software already installed that they need for the whole two years they're here. Um, if they want to download other things on that computer, that's fine. Make sure they're legal. Because when the laptop comes into me to be fixed, I'm not going to always check it again, check out what's on there 
but I might have to ship it to somebody else that might if it has to go to Apple. So if it's something on there that's not should, that shouldn't be on there, please get it off there before it comes to me if you can. That's if you can. <laughs> yes, yeyeah, sometimes, and that's when you get caught, folks, because it'll need to be repaired, and you'll have some things on there that shouldn't be on there. Uh, while we're in that vein, let me talk to you about something that's very important with regard to the use of that computer. Is what We've been talking about how to care for it. I'm going to talk about the use of it now. And that is email, instant messaging, blogging. Do not, and listen carefully, do not put anything in an email, an instant message, or a blog, or any other method of public communication that you wouldn't stand in front of this auditorium and talk into this microphone and say. Because that, everything you put in there is public. It is not private. And we can dig it out. Okay? Mr. Grady is our blogging guru. He knows every blog that ever exists. And he'll find it. And what happens is sometimes students write into blogs not very nice things sometimes about teachers, students, even administrators. I don't know where that's coming from. <laughs> and what happens is, particularly if it's another student, they print it off, take it down, and say, look. And so we start tracking it down. Now that happened, it, it's, I don't even know if it happened last year, did it? twice last year. But it, it's, it's become very infrequent uh, because we try to warn you ahead of time. And the same thing goes for email. You know, they can pull that hard drive. They can check the server. They can find everything that you put on that computer. So be very careful all right, how you use it. Students, if you can't tell your parents what you put on there, then don't put it on there. Okay? Because what happens when we get these? We call mom and dad, and we have you read it to them, exactly what you put on there. So be very, very careful. Now, some of you will not hear that, or you're hearing it and you're going to do something anyway. There are some heavy consequences to this. We're very serious about it. We're not going to allow anyone to be harassed in this institution. Period. If you want to get in trouble quickly, that's the way to do it. We create an environment of tolerance and respect, and we don't allow on a personal level or on an electronic level for anything to get in that way. So be careful. Now, I'm going to let Mr. Grady talk to you a little bit about the insurance and how important that is since he has to deal with that every day. <laughs> I talked again with the students about this and hopefully they got a chance to talk to you a little bit about today. If you did not get insurance, please get insurance because those 18 water damage computers last year were all covered by insurance. So what comes through me and goes to the insurance company, it will cover you. If your computer's pulled off the desk because the cord was running across the room and your roommate did it falls and hits the screen, the screen shatters, it's $479 plus installation. So you're looking at about $550, $575 for a new screen. The water damage, the motherboard gets damaged, and that means the RAM, the hard drive, everything's damaged. We're going we're gonna to kill the computer and we're going to charge $1,150 because that's the price we paid for them. So we're talking a brand new computer if it's water damage. So you pay that $60 for the year and then you if you get the water damage or some damage, you only have to pay $350, which is a deductible, instead of $1,100. It's a heck of a deal. So please, 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 if you did not get the insurance, please do. And you can do that when you check out. You can go down to Candy Manship's office. The people at the front desk will know where, will be able to tell you how to get there, and they'll take you down there. Another thing that's not covered by insurance, and I, the students, I, I can't tell you enough, your chargers. Don't leave them laying around. Parents, it's 
there's a serial number on the charger. I showed the students where it's at. If they want to track the serial number, they can. Ball State does not track the serial number because it's not over $1,000. Um, the chargers, for me, if it's broken, if it's stolen, are only $45. If you buy them from Apple, you're going to look at $80 to $85. But I buy them by the 50s and just bought 100 of them for the upcoming year just for this. Just, just be careful with the chargers. <laughs> Now, are there any questions? Oh, I'm sorry, one other thing. People that are going to bring their own computers, that is fine, but do not bring a router. Because if you bring a router, a wireless router, and hook it up in your room, your room's going to take up our airport systems and suck up the bandwidth from our network. And that IP address is always associated with your room, and the MAC address is always associated with your computer. So UCS knows exactly who's taking up the bandwidth. And what they do is they come in and they shut your room down for three weeks. So you have no internet access from your room for three weeks. So please, no wireless routers. Any questions for Dr. Williams or I? One other thing. <laughs> thumb drives. If you get a chance, get a thumb drive. Um, little flash drive plugs into USB port on the laptop. Uh, laptops have USB and USB 2 compatibility. Um, one gig thumb drive, like $16 at Staples, will be fine. Um, the, the reason you need it is, say you're working on a paper the night before, you back it up to the thumb drive, you get up in the morning, your computer won't boot. And you have that paper due at 8 o'clock, and you didn't print it off the night before. I might be able to save your paper when you bring it to me, 90% of the time I can, but there's that 10% time I can't. And then you have to go talk to the teacher and tell them what happened. These computers get used a lot. So the more you move it around, the hard drive flashes around, the motherboard's bounced around, it has a tendency, they have a possibility of crashing. So thumb drives are an incredible investment and could save you from getting uh, D-star on the paper. All right, now any questions? Yes. We have wireless printers throughout the building. We have eight of them. Um, some, most of the time they work, but there's some instances if the system goes down, they're not able to print. So if you want to get a printer, make sure it's Mac OS X compatible. And it, because it usually says OS X, and because um, the new one won't be out, the new system won't be out till October, and then most printers will already be compatible with it. Any other questions? Yes. Yes, um, Ball State supplies you with four gigabytes of space on what's called iLocker and iWeb, and if they're in my class, they will learn how to use that. Any other questions? Yes? You can, they're kind of expensive, though. Any other? Yes. Mm -hmm. Nope. Is it Windows XP? It's just a matter of connecting to the BSU network and then logging in, same way as the Macs do. So it's not a problem at all. Anything else? Yes. No, these batteries have already been charged up and charged down and up and down again, so it'll give them the full life while they're in, so there shouldn't be a problem. If the battery life drops below an hour and a half to two hours, which shouldn't, fill out the tech form, and I'll get you new batteries. I have new batteries in my office. Oh, thank you. I forgot this this morning during our student session. Don't just drop by my office expecting me to fix your computer without filling out that form. Because besides just supporting the iBooks, I am a full-time faculty member, and I'm in charge of all the computers throughout that building. So I have a lot on my plate to cover. So if it's during move-in, you're allowed. 
on Saturday. But that's the only day. And I would still want you to email me over the summer so I know you're going to come down, so I know what the problem is. So if you need another computer, I can just swap it out right there and take like three minutes instead of taking maybe 20 minutes. Yes? Thank you. Every room is provided with a switch and three Ethernet cables. So if you bring a, lap or bring a desktop, bring a laptop, bring whatever you want, these, they plug right into the RJ45 cables and into the switch, and the, there's one for each person in the room. And each switch has four, so if you bring an extra RJ45 cable, you can have more than two computers in the room. We're very lucky, and we've been very blessed at the Academy to to have a good parent support group. And, uh, and Mr. John DeCook, who is a representative from our parent group, wants to spend a few minutes with you. And I certainly would encourage all of you to consider joining this group. It's been very helpful for us and in some ways very essential for us to, as a survival as a school. So. Actually, I probably shut it off. I think I'm loud enough that it carries. Well, no, you need that because they're taking Oh, they are kidding. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, we'll be okay with that. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Academy once again. As the doctor told you, I am John DeCook. I'm actually the coordinator of the parent organization here. Now, I know you guys have gotten a lot of information today, laptops, health forms, how to move in, what you've got to do, everything you've got to have, how much it's going to cost. But right now, I know the two most important questions on your mind are number one, is there a parent organization? And number two, how can I get involved? I'm here to help you out with both of those today. As I mentioned, I'm the coordinator of the parent organization. We don't actually have a president. We have what we call a coordinator. The other thing you'll notice, as I said, it's a parent organization. It is not a parent teacher organization. We do have some staff representation, but it's largely through the student life counselors. So we have a couple of SLCs that join the meetings. Other than that, it's just parents running the show. There are a few officers, the coordinator, treasurer, secretary. We have somebody in charge of logo wear, and then we have individual chair people for the events that go on throughout the year. So if you've been at any high school in the state, I'm sure everybody's familiar with parent-teacher organizations there. I don't know if you're coming from a big school, you're coming from a small school, but you'll note this is a very small school, 300 or so students. Now, my son actually came from Hamilton Southeastern, about 35, 3,600 kids in four grades. So, big change to come down here. One of the other big changes in a school like that, you tend to get kind of these dynasties of people coming in, their parents there, they've got three or four kids, they stay the president forever. Here, we have turnover every year. So, what our goal is, is to make sure that there's a nice smooth transition this year. So, we're asking the junior parents to get involved. I think the handover at the beginning of the year was a little bit rough. We had mainly senior parents in the organization last year and so they were all gone. When we came and took over this year, we didn't have a whole lot of handover. I myself joined about midway through. We had a previous coordinator have to leave. Her son left school for medical purposes. He just could not do the classes anymore, so he went home. She left, handed it over to me. I took over just before post-prom. So it's been an interesting run through the second half of the year this year. So as a parent organization, we meet once a month. Now we know everybody's scattered across the state. It's kind of tough to get down here for a meeting. I'm sure you heard earlier there's an extended break once a month, a four-day weekend. Usually they're Thursday through Sunday. The one in the spring is Friday to Monday. What we do is take advantage of that. Everybody has to bring their kids back at that time. We hold our meetings. That's Sunday evening at 6 o'clock. We hold them in Elliott Hall. Now Elliott Hall is connected to the dormitory by a tunnel. It's real easy to walk across there. So if you come back on time, get the kids in, you can come right across 6 o'clock, sit down, join us for the meeting. And we certainly appreciate everybody attending that. There's no need to be an officer. Feel free to come and check in. Another thing is, since we are geographically dispersed, we keep in contact via email. Everybody's had to provide an email address to the school. I don't have access to that list. It's kept under very tight wraps, so don't worry about spam or you know me trying to send you a free trip to Bermuda or something like that. Strictly for communication purposes, and we do have a communications chair. They put together something called the IAPO Communicator. Comes out a little email newsletter. It's in PDF format. It'll also be printed up, set on the table next to the front desk. So when the kids come in, wherever you check in, there's a little counter there. Mitt's bus schedule up on the wall. We'll have a stack of them there. You can pick them up anytime you come in. 
When you get the IAPO communicator, please take a few minutes, look through it. It's going to tell you about upcoming sporting events. It's going to give you other important things that are coming up, break information. Whatever the kids are involved in, there's always little write-ups. If they've gone to competitions, whatever it is, it will be in there. And we'll also talk about our events throughout the year. As I mentioned, we do sponsor several events during the year, one of which is logo wear sales. You may have seen some of the kids running around here. Some of the faculty members have shirts that say Indiana Academy on them. T-shirts, polos, blankets, whatever it is, if it's got Indiana Academy on it, you can purchase it through the IAPO. When move-in day, we're going to have a table set up, or we should have a table set up, where you can go ahead and place an order or purchase something that's right there. Kids can get some school spirit that way. One of the other things we do throughout the year is we offer parents the opportunity to buy pizza coupons. I was just Last year was $20. It was Papa John's pizza and a two liter of soda, and you get two of those for $20. Kids can use them anytime they want. Pizza Place delivers right to the dorm. IEPO gets a little cut of that, and kids get a treat. It's pretty reasonable as far as the cost goes. Big event each semester we run is called Sub Treat Night, and Sub Treat Night is the Sunday before finals. We always need help with that. We always need donations for that, and I'll talk about that momentarily. But subtreat night is a chance to give the kids a break. They've been cramming for finals. They're a little stressed out. They're up against the wall. We go ahead and bring in gigantic subs, party trays, chips, Little Debbie snacks, sodas. Kids just to get there, go down to the lounge, socialize, have a good time for a couple of hours. I did not attend the one in the fall, but the one in the spring, I will tell you, the kids were lined up two hours ahead of time, sitting in a line in the lobby. So it's a very popular event. Our biggest one of the year, though, is the post-prom. Like every school, the academy does have a prom. Obviously, it's a smaller student body. Prom takes place right across the street in the student center. There's a nice ballroom upstairs. You guys are probably in there at some point. And that's hosted there. As soon as that's done, the kids come back across the street, change clothes, go to post-prom if they choose to do so. They can even go to post-prom if they don't go to prom. It's a two and a half hour long lock-in. So we are there till 3 a.m hosting games, providing food. We ran out the bottom of the student center for that. So there's a bowling alley, there's an arcade. We set up Vegas type games, Plinko, you know, toss the bean bag into the bushel basket, that kind of stuff. Kids can win tickets which go into a raffle. And last year we gave away a number of t-shirts, blankets from different places, some college hats, and prizes went all the way up to, I believe, a toaster oven and an iPod were given away at the end of the night. So it's kind of a big event and again, we need a lot of volunteers for that, we need some donations for that. So, as parents, what can you do to get involved? Number one, please read the communicator. That's the key thing. Keep in touch. Number two, if you ever have any questions, comments, whatever, you can get a hold of one of the officers. Now, my email address will be published in the first IAPO communicator. I will provide it for you today if you'd care to write it down. Unfortunately, I don't have the spiffy PowerPoint presentation to give it to you. But let me go ahead and spell that for you if anyone cares to take it down. It's J DeCook, and that is J D E. C O C Q at sbcglobal.net. So again, J D E C O C Q at sbcglobal.net. I'll be happy to get back to you, provide you with whatever you want. So, number one involvement, just stay in touch with what's going on. Number two, Volunteer your time if you possibly can. We always need people up here to help out again. Subtreat night, serving, setting up tearing down, making sure the kids all get through there. Post-prom, very important. We need people to work stations. We need people to help out with the food. We need a chairperson for each of these events. So if you want to get involved, but again, time is limited. I know everybody's is. And you say, okay, I can help out with one event. Okay, take over as coordinator for one of the sub-treat nights. Help out with the logo wear if you can throughout the year. The other important way is when we ask for donations, please help out if you can. Again, Subtreat Night, we're going to send out, say, if you can donate some chips, you can donate a six-pack of soda, a two-liter bottle. If you can give $5 to help out, please do so. Post-prom, again, is a big party. Last year, the price tag was fairly substantial. I don't want to say exactly what, but let's say $4,000 is probably a pretty reasonable estimate. So we do ask for a donation at that time of the year. If you can give you know, whatever you're able to help out with, we ask for a minimal donation at that point. So, um, again, four things we're going to do throughout the year. We're going to keep everybody in touch once a month with what's going on. And our meetings will start the first month school's back in session. So when you return from Labor Day vacation, that's when we'll have our first meeting. So please join us. And again, any questions today before I go? If anybody's got any questions, I'll be happy to answer as best I can.
No questions at all. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I unfortunately don't. I, I, please, I don't have the answer for that right away. And again, I came in kind of late, so the charter bus was already set up for the year. I can tell you a little bit about it. It does run at the beginning and end of each of the extended weekends. It's a very minimal fee, if I remember right. The kids, it is a nice, the big charter bus, everything stores underneath, so the kids don't have to worry about it. They do a very good job of getting it organized. I've been here several times when they call the kids out. They go over the PA, say, now the region bus leaves in 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, five minutes. You know, get out there. There's a sign-up list, so they make sure all the kids have gotten on the bus safely. They check it all off, make sure everybody's on there, get them up, and then pick them up, bring them back down for you. It is kind of a long drive up there and back, so it is a pretty useful so thing. We don't have any aware of. Right. As far as I, I'm aware, no. But I will be checking in with the school before I leave and make sure because somebody did ask that in the last session I just have not had time to follow up on it so I will stop by before I go and then be able to get an answer out to you shortly after that other questions okay once again I welcome everybody to the Academy congratulations it's a huge thing it's gonna be a big step for your kids it's been a lot of fun and I will say a year ago I was sitting out there just like you were trying to take all this in I was the rookie parent, now I'm the veteran, but at mid-year, we're going to like to do a handover for all of the officers. So if you are interested in being an officer, please start showing up to the meetings. We'll probably hold an election the second time around if we need to. So come in September, we'll decide in October who's going to take over, kind of coach you through to December, let you take over the reins at that point. And that way, you're here through the second half of the junior year, beginning of the senior year. You can help with a smoother transition at that point as well. So again, everyone's welcome. Please pitch in wherever you can. We appreciate any help you can offer. We're going to talk about each of the divisions and course departments. We'll have a representative from that department who will give you more detail about the courses so you have a good idea of what's being taught, what you need to register for. Then we're going to, as Mr. McClure said, we're going to go through that course registration form with you, and you should have those, I'm assuming. Does everybody have their course registration form? I'm hoping. So you will need that, so as we go through it, you can begin to fill it out. Then after we finish that, we're going to give you some time to talk as a family and, begin to fi and finish completing that form. And we will be here, Dr. Smith, Mr. McClure, and myself, and some others will be here to help you if you have questions. Now remember, tomorrow you will be sitting down with a advisor to fine-tune this. So questions for us should just be kind of general kinds of questions. You'll get an opportunity to fine-tune this tomorrow. All right, so that's, that's the menu for today. Brittany Davis. Come forward, Brittany. <laughs> Not that you single you out or Yes. Everybody look at Brittany. She didn't pick up her card. <laughs> All right. Two numbers. Two huge numbers to remember. You gotta have 47 total credits to graduate and 26 and a half from the Indiana Academy. The 47 are, is, the, is the requirement for an Indiana Academic Honors Diploma. That is the only diploma we get. If for some reason you do not qualify that, you cannot receive a diploma from the Academy. And 26 and a half must be from the Academy. Also remember as you complete your schedule, that not all our classes meet every day. In fact, we don't have any classes that meet every day. Most of our classes will meet 50 minutes, minutes Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and 75 minutes Tuesday and Thursdays. Then you have science classes who will meet Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with a lab on Tuesday and Thursday, a two-hour lab. Our foreign language classes will meet four days a week for 50 minutes. 
So there's the, all those different permutations of class times. Now, I, in the last session, I had this slide towards the end. This time, I moved it up towards the front. So as we go through classes and talk about in each department, you can see which one of those are dual credit classes as we talk about them. Dual credit. What this means is these are classes that are taught at the academy that you can get both academy credit and college credit at the same time. There's a catch, however. <laughs> to get the college credit, you got to pay Ball State $250. Now, for college credit, folks, that's pretty cheap. You're not going to do much better than that at a major university. So if any of these courses you want to get dual credit, then these are the ones you want to look at. Now the process will not take place for paying until when? September? So we will contact you in September if you're enrolled in any of these courses if you wish to enroll in Ball, through Ball State and get that on your transcript. So you can leave here with a combination of these courses and our AP courses with a significant amount of college credit already on a transcript ready to start. Any questions about this? Yes. Excuse me? It's in the, yes, it's in the course catalog and the course catalog is in the website. Okay, so if you look in your course catalog, it should be towards the front somewhere. All right. Now, you can, Academy students can also take Ball State courses. Now, those have to be approved by us and if they are to get Academy credit and Ball State credit. Now, if you take a Ball State course, that's, I'm not talking about a dual credit course, but if you walk across the street, and take a Ball State course, then you have to pay the full tuition, which is somewhere around $900. Okay, not cheap. So you see the difference. But we have a number, huh? Or audit. Oh, yes. The other thing, yes, glad you said. The other thing you can do is audit a Ball State course, which means that you will get the course on your transcript as an audit. Well, they get a, you get a grade. No, you don't get a grade? You get a grade from us. Okay, they get a grade from us, but it's $45, okay? But you don't get college credit for it, right? Now, Burroughs High School is part of this building also. You, a lot of our students will take art courses, journalism courses, the band, the orchestra course, which is here at Burroughs, and you can do that also. Now, in English, we have eight credits that are total that are required. Four of those must be from the academy. What you see listed are all of the English electives. Okay. Now, four from the academy. Generally, students will take an English course every semester. However, that does not mean you can't double up and take two in a semester. But generally, it's one a semester. As a junior, first semester, American literature. Second semester, the title has changed. It's now just world literature. I haven't changed my slide yet. So first semester, American. Second semester, world. That's every junior. Now, if it, after the first semester, if your English teacher feels your writing skills are not up to par, you will be required to register for our writing lab. We do not want any student to graduate from the Indiana Academy without superb writing skills. If we're going to send you off to some of the best colleges in the country, we're going to send you off with commensurate writing skills. And particularly when you start writing those essays for college applications. So that means you have two other semesters that you can take an English elective or double up. Okay? Does that make sense? Everybody with me? Okay. Social studies. 
Six credits required total. Four of those must be from the academy. Three of those will be in what we call Civitas 1, 2, and 3. That will be explained in a little more detail in a moment. Okay. Here are all the other electives that are available. Okay. The first semester, everybody takes Civitas 1. Second semester, guess what? Civitas 2. The third semester or fourth semester, you can take your Civitas 3. Then you have to work in an elective in there somewhere. Now, Mr. Stewart, who is head of our humanities division, always talks to everyone to enlighten them on some of the electives and some of the further requirements. He is not here today, but through the magic of the media, I will bring him to you, if you'll just give me a second. I guess I should push go, shouldn't I? Well, we can't do that, can we? Complex. 
not only in the social studies, but in the English as well. We use a lot of primary sources. We use text that sometimes are in language that are old English. And sometimes that can be slightly daunting if you've not been exposed to those kinds of, those kinds of languages. But we will go through those piece by piece in depth. There are a lot of activities, a lot of simulations, a lot of role plays, a lot of different activities we use in the classroom. So keep in mind that the framework in which you sign up also challenges the way you've orally originally thought about how you do your education. Now, the two and a half hour time for there, there's a break. We, we don't just go two full and a half hours. I mean, there's a break in there for you. We, we do have some candy about ourselves. We thought so too candy. Okay. In the English department, same thing. You have an English in terms of the American literature, which is first semester, and an emphasis on those documents, and the second semester of world literature. But once again, there are lectures can have different combinations of time frames. Welcome to the Academy. We're looking forward to having you in our classes. All right. Isn't that cool? <laughs> <laughs> we brought him from afar. Yeah, let's see if I can get this back up. Okay. We've already seen Kent. All right, foreign language. Uh, foreign language. You can take three years of one language or two years of two different foreign languages. That's the academic honors diploma requirements. Now, listen carefully as I explain how that applies to the academy. What we say here is that in order to get the three years of credit, you must pass the last semester of our third year class. All right? Now, if you go two years of 2-2 two, two plan, if you've had two years of Spanish at your home high school, we'll give you that two years of Spanish. And you may take two years of Japanese, two years of Chinese, two years of German, just one of those, not all of those. <laughs> all right? Here. So you can go either route. Now, all of you were tested, in, if you were in one of those foreign languages, Spanish, French, German, Latin, is that what? All of you were tested if you were in one of those areas. What we have found is that there are all different kinds of language, foreign language programs across this state. We get some students here are very, very well prepared and some who are not. That's just the facts of life. If we take you, if you've had two years of Spanish, for example, and we take you and put you in our third year Spanish and you're not ready, you're not going to pass. Our, Spain, our foreign languages are taught at a college level, and we move quickly. So you must be prepared. That's the reason that we give you that placement test. We learned, and some other students learned the hard way, you cannot pass them unless you are adequately prepared. Okay? Now, you have a great offering of foreign languages. You have seven different foreign languages you can choose from here. And then if you reach a level beyond where we can teach it, you can continue your studies at Ball State as an audit. So you can go almost as far as you want to in a foreign language. I want you to notice at the bottom, we do not include Spanish 1 as part of our curriculum. We offer three years of Spanish, two, three, and AP Spanish as the fourth year. Okay. It's great that we have Dr. Pentecost, Dr. Gieslin Pentecost, who is the department chair for foreign language here with us today to give us some more details. And she also teaches the German and the Latin. I understood that she knew Julius personally. Is that right? What? <laughs> <laughs> What, 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 wait, 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 wait. You gotta give me this. Oh, sorry. Well, I, I probably talked <laughs> Just hold this loud up. enough, but. Oh. So, what do I have You're to do? You're being taped. 
Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Well, um, shall I start over again? <laughs> well, anyway, nowadays they don't want us to call it foreign language, but they want us to call them world languages. So I never thought about it in the past. I always knew that there are a lot of students that come in with Spanish. And this year, I checked into how many students uh, that are here, so there's supposed to be 119, how many of them uh, have taken Spanish in their home school? What do you think the percentage is? Well, 75 is pretty close, right? It's 70 percent, and I'm really, I think that's mind-boggling. There are so many other languages, and why is that? Any idea? Can you fill me in? Why do so many students take Spanish? So you want to communicate with the people that come to the United States? Well, I'm sure there's a good reason to learn Spanish. I, I'm not against it, but <laughs> it just seems an overwhelming number. <laughs> yeah, please. Yeah, so sometimes you only have a choice between Spanish and one other language. Like sometimes it's Spanish and German and so Any other reason? Yeah? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there are some areas where Spanish really comes in handy. Well, one other reason, I, yeah, please. Uh -huh, I was just waiting for that. <laughs> Because, but when I talk to our Spanish teacher and we, when she talks about the preterite and all the other tenses, well, it doesn't sound to me that Spanish is that easy. And, and I would like to tell you, you know, as long as the motivation is there and you take your time to study, you can manage any language. I mean, Russian kids learn Russian, right? Chinese kids <laughs> learn Chinese. <laughs> So what, why wouldn't we be able, the Americans? We are smart, you know, we can handle all these languages. Well, anyway, now here's the academy. And are we glad there is the academy with all the languages? So we have one classical language. You might have checked the Calac out already. What's the classical language we offer? Latin, right? We have one Slavic language, which is Russian. We have one Germanic, German, right? Romance language, we have two, French and Spanish, and then we have two Asian, Asian languages, Chinese and Japanese. And how exciting that you have all the election. You might have um, thought about uh, maybe switching languages, or there's always a chance to take another language as an elective. Or when you're done with your third year in one language, you might want to sample one in your senior year. So I encourage you to really consider that. Um, even the government has decided foreign languages are very, very important. And I have here a little article from last year. It's, um, the title is Bush, which is President Bush, launches plan to strengthen U.S. security through language education. Also, even the government realizes that languages are very important. Now, the two languages that we offer that, um, um, that President Bush wants us to promote is Russian and Chinese. Russia and China are very powerful countries, and we never know which way we are going with them, right? Sometimes they are friends, and sometimes they might turn to be, you know, a little complicated to deal with. And um, uh, it's very good, <laughs> and, you know, Eventually, if we have a few students that really know that language, and um, in the past it has shown that, you know, languages are important. Um, certainly, some of the other languages are just as important, like German and Japanese. Uh, both countries have been allies of the United States for a long time, and they have very strong business connection especially a Japanese, as a Japan invests heavily in the economy of the United States and especially in, uh, in Indiana. French is a beautiful language and um, certainly, you know, I always can recommend that too. Some people 
take Latin as another language, a second language, maybe because of the SAT verbal scores. 70% of the words in the English language are based on Latin. So when we do Latin, we study derivatives. And if you like mythology, we do a lot of mythology too. So think carefully what you decide about your language studies, and your advisor will also help you, you know, make up your mind. Thanks so much, and have a nice afternoon, and looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Yeah, any questions? Okay, thank you. Oh, I was going to say before I switched the slide, I don't even notice there was a little picture in that other slide about the foreign language up in the corner, which you really couldn't see very well. But that gentleman was formerly our French teacher, and he's no longer with us teaching French. He's now working for the National Security Agency. I don't think I was supposed to tell that. They may have to shoot me. <laughs> but he's now working for the National Security Agency, translating, I think he's learned Arabic and some other languages to for you know, uh, over, I, I think they monitor phone calls and internet transmissions and all of those kinds of things. So there are a lot of jobs out there. Math, we must not forget math. Eight total credits are required in math, and four of those must be from the academy. You can see the range of math courses that we offer, and Dr. Shobe will talk a little more about those. Now, of course, you, you took the math placement exam today, and that will that tells you where you should start your math courses. And again, that math placement course is so we don't put students in a failing situation. Again, all these courses are taught with college textbooks. So we want to make sure you're ready to take those courses. Now, if for some reason that you feel that that placement was way off, uh, Dr. Shobe will be tomorrow, will be down in the advising area and you can have a conversation with him. And that's always available to you. So without further ado, let me introduce Dr. Franklin Schaub, who is chair of the math department. Oh boy. <laughs> thank, thank you. I'm going to reconfigure this a little bit first, I think. That was loud. I don't know whether that took more time than it was worth. Maybe it was OK. Um, so in math, uh, the, uh, the eight credits required do include some specific requirements. They must include algebra one, algebra two, geometry, which takes up six of the eight, and then two credits beyond algebra two. We'll try to, as far as your four credits at the academy are concerned, we'll try to start you where you are and, and proceed from there for two years' worth. Um, I've noticed that there were three persons who our placement information says have not had geometry. And we don't teach geometry ourselves usually, and, but we usually arrange for them to take it at the Burst Laboratory School, so that's probably what you can expect. Um, in some cases, it may be a mistake, too, because, for example, if you're in the in Fort Wayne Integrated Math Program and you got far enough through the program, you've probably already had geometry without having that name on the transcript. So. So that would count if you've had it, and so we may need to correct that information if that applies. Um, we do start then with Algebra 2, and last year we had 33 students in Algebra 2, and about 40% of them had taken Algebra 2 before, so if you're asked to repeat Algebra 2, don't feel that you're being discriminated against or picked on, or that this is some very unusual situation. It's really not too unusual. Um, just like foreign language courses, algebra courses across the state vary quite a bit. Um, we had a case two years ago where someone was asked to take Algebra 2 and she'd already had it and done very well in it. And she said later that our course, her course had only covered about half what ours did, so that might be the explanation. Um, most of our incoming juniors take a pre-calculus course as juniors. 
And last year we had a total of 98 in the two pre-calculus courses. That was over half the class coming in. Um, they're called pre-calculus and analysis, and they use the same textbook. The difference is the pre-calculus class will move more quickly and, and cover more. And to some extent, at a, the, to some extent, you might have harder questions to answer too. Um, and the analysis class is a little bit more relaxed in pace. Um, so, um, so that's that distinction, and 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 what those courses are. So, if you're placed in analysis, that's that is a pre-calculus course, and if you're expecting pre-calculus, that that is one. Um, Beyond that, we have AP Calculus AB and AP Calculus BC. And the relationship between them is that, uh, well, first, AP Calculus BC is two semester college calculus, science, and engineering track. And it's done at the same pace. Oh, oh yes. This way? Oh, OK, good point. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so it's done at the same pace as it typically is at a college course for a student in a science and engineering track in college. AP Calculus AB covers part of that material, but not all of it. They do one semester, the first semester plus part of the second semester. But that's spread across the whole year, so at somewhat slower pace, they do it very thoroughly and carefully. Um, both of those are available for dual credit, and, it, and uh, the AB for the entire year, you'll get four credits at Ball State if you take the dual credit option, and for BC, you'll get a total of eight credits at Ball State, eight semester hours if you take the dual credit option for that. Um, the placement process with the results that you got doesn't really take into account that you've had AP calculus if you come here already having had it. And so you would need to speak with me to, uh, to make an adjustment and not just believe what it says since it wouldn't know that you already had it. It's based on, it's based on what courses you had in terms of Algebra two, Geometry and Pre-Calculus and on your score on our placement test and also on your Math SAT score. Um, if you've had AB Calculus already, typically what you would take this coming year would be in the fall either Linear Algebra or Probability Theory and in the spring, the second semester of BC Calculus, which uh, most of which would not be included in AB Calculus. If you already had BC Calculus, then the typical thing after that would be multivariable calculus and the fall differential equations in the spring. And in that situation, I would recommend linear algebra as a companion to multivariable calculus if you have time for it in your schedule and have an interest level that's strong enough that you would want to take two math courses at once. Um, Okay, so that's the math curriculum. Do you have any questions? We have a variety of other courses outside that track, too. Um, typically, those would come as seniors. Some are occasionally taken by second semester juniors, particularly, or, well, occasionally first semester. I had a first semester junior take statistics last year, for example, so that can be an option. Okay, but no questions. Okay, um, the other thing I need to talk about is calculators. And there's a calculator policy among the available handouts here, and it lists the courses for which we're planning to use each calculator. And in the past, the TI-86 has been our primary calculator. And last year, parents told us they were having trouble finding it. And so we're kind of going into a transitional period now in which we will increase the use of the 84 and 89 and gradually phase the 86 out, although not quickly. So for next year, we're planning for the teachers to use, in the class demonstrations, to use an 83, actually. But the 83 and 84 are almost interchangeable, except the 84 is faster and processor and more memory. So we'll have an 83 plus for the teacher to use in, let's see, in Algebra 2 and in Pre-Calculus. And we'll have an 86 for the teacher to use for demonstrations in class in Analysis and in AP Calculus, both versions. And we'll be using the TI-89 in the other courses. In most cases, you can probably use any of the three in any course. Um, you can see your teacher about whether it's a problem for a particular combination of a particular calculator and course, and there may be a few cases of that. Um, in some cases, um, we can provide calculators for certain courses if, if it's different from what you already have. And you can also rent a calculator from the Academy for $40 for the academic year. And you could trade that in between semesters for a different model if you needed to do that. 
So that's the calculator situation. The other courses are, well, let's see. Well, I don't know whether this is interesting. Well, I'll say this. The, uh, the, uh, the 86 courses for next year would probably include about 50% of the student enrollments and something like 25% or a little, between 25 and 30% in 89 courses and between 20 and 25% in 83, 84 courses. Any, any questions about calculators? Okay, well, thank you. Okay, com we'll go into computer science then. Um, everyone's required to either take computer applications in their first semester here or test out of it, and so you've attempted to test out of it, and I guess you have the results already. You do have a second attempt to test out when you arrive in August if you didn't this time and want to brush up and try it again. Um, aside from that, we offer a variety of computer science courses as electives. And for all but two of them, you would have to have Introduction to Programming as a first course, that is, before you take any of the, all of them except Computer Applications and Introduction to Programming itself, and Web Page Development and Multimedia Productions require Introduction to Programming as a prerequisite. So if you're really interested in taking computer science electives, other than those exceptional courses, then it would be good to get Introduction to Programming into your schedule early so that you have the prerequisite done and you can go on to the other things. Um, Web page development can be taken without any other course ahead of it. And multimedia production can be taken based on just the only prerequisite being web page development. So that's the other track that's available for those courses. Any questions about computer science? Uh, yes. <laughs> I don't know. It's, OK, thank you. Dr. Williams knows it's Java. <laughs> No, I'm on the math side. I know almost nothing about computer science, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Um, I'm the purple card. Yes. Yes means take it, and it'll either say yes or test it out. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes or test it out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Oh. Just can't make any of these sessions, and we put it on a CD so they can watch it in the comfort of their home. I guess. All right, science. Uh, Dr. Adams, who is our science division chair, is not here today, but Dr. Smith is going to stand in his stead. Dr. Smith is a longtime member of the science department and former chair. And in science, you've got to have six credits, as it says, four of those must be from the academy, and you must have earned two credits each in biology, chemistry, and physics. Most all of you will come in with your biology. Probably 50 to 60 percent of you will come in with your chemistry. But almost none of you will have had your physics. Now, some of you may have had an integrated chemistry physics class as a freshman. That will not count. Some of you may have had freshman physics. That will not count. So you end up having to take our physics course. Okay. You are placed in a science course based on your math placement. Now, Mr. Uh, Dr. Smith will talk about this a little more. But it, your AP physics requires that you be taking AP calculus. So if you did not test into AP Calculus and you want to take AP Physics, what do you do? You wait till next year. You take it as a senior. So think about that as you're doing your registrations. Jeff? When it says up there about placement in science class is dependent upon your math placement, what we're referring to specifically is the physics. Physics is the only one that's tied in directly to the math placement. So if you tested into um, pre-calculus or I believe elementary uh, analysis, that would put you into the general physics. And then as Dr. Williams said, it would take the AP physics in order to go into uh, AP physics B and then you already would have had to completed calculus to go into the AP Physics C. 
we get a few folks who qualify into that one, but uh, you'd have to be pretty up, high up on the math level for doing that. Beyond that, uh, it's a matter of putting your credits together to end up with a total of four. But there is one thing that's not on the slides that plays into this. The credit weight for the science classes is 1.5 rather than 1. And this is because we have the five contact hours with the three hours of lecture and then the two or three hour laboratory that goes along with the class. So if you take a year of physics, that's three credits. You only need four to meet the minimum requirement from the Academy for graduation. That basically means one more semester somewhere. Now that can be off your senior year or if you're delaying physics, take something your junior year and then have the physics your senior year. One of the other things that the science division has done is that we've really wanted to increase opportunities for exploration with the students here at the academy. And we kind of found that tying you up for a whole semester was a little bit rough, both for you and both for us as instructors. So starting last year and expanding even more into this year, we have created a number of what we're calling quarter courses. These run for half a semester and they are very subject specific to give you a chance to mix and match and try out some things and get a chance to dabble in some areas that you may not have been able to otherwise. Many of the topics that you see listed up there are going to be quarter course topics. When you have the catalog in front of you tonight and you're looking through and choosing things, look very carefully on anything be well, besides the, uh, the mainstream physics classes, look very carefully on the quarter weight, or credit weight rather. See if it's a full semester class, which would be 1.5 credits. If it's a quarter class, it probably will be 0.75 credits as long as there's a laboratory component with it, and then notice which quarter it falls into. Quarter one and two are fall, quarter three and four are spring. We do have two science classes that do not have a laboratory component. They're only weighted at 0.5 and those cannot be used as your science credit for the graduation because there's no laboratory component. You have to have the laboratory component. So I think that's bioethics and natural readings and history or science or something like that. The title's probably up there. Yeah, uh, readings in natural history, there we go, uh, with that one. So most of the other ones are going to have a laboratory component where you're going to be two to three hours in the lab. You'll be doing lots of lab reports under various types and shapes uh, and so forth. But because science is restructured a little bit where we uh, have weighted the credits for 1.5 but still kept the total required for graduation at four, you can now mix and match and piece together and, and do all kinds of other ways of getting your science credits in. Now, if you are a uh, science guru, you've got a lot of things to pick from. We've got a number of electives in the physics area, some in the chemistry. Uh, for pretty much everybody, the life science credits are all electives, assuming you had biology when you came in. If not, you need to talk with me about AP biology because that's probably where we'll put you if you've not had AP biology coming in. Or, excuse me, not had biology coming in. And then we've got a number of quarter course electives there. We also have some offerings in the earth space area with uh, astronomy. We have two semester long classes in astronomy. And uh, real quick lab test here. When do you think their lab time meets? At night. Okay, astronomy does have its lab at night. So, uh, you know, kind of for obvious reasons here. Uh, but uh, we do have um, access to some telescopes and some things there with those. We've added in a couple of astronomy quarter courses for next year. And we've also added in, thanks to the strength of one of our uh, newer faculty members, some geophysics uh, for next year. So there's quite a wide range of offerings there. Um, Pay attention to the physics, figure out which one you're going to be in, which year you're going to take it in, and then what you're going to piece together to get that minimum of a fourth credit. But I'm really hoping that many of you will take advantage of this wide breadth of offerings and take a whole bunch of stuff. Keep us busy. Any quick questions for science area? Oh, yes. 
AP Physics B and C, what's the difference between them? Basically the math that is used. AP Physics C is totally calculus based and B is not. B will be using trigonometry, it will be using Algebra 2 levels, uh, pre-calc style of things, but it's not calculus based. Topic wise, some little differences in between them, but uh, they're pretty much the same. Uh, in fact, the Academy altered our AP Physics C to actually go above and beyond the national program for AP Physics C. We wanted to match with Ball State for dual credit for that course. Ball State's class was a five-hour class, which then had more seat time for the lectures and some additional labs. Well, we added more time to our class to make it match. So they will meet six hours a week instead of five, but unfortunately it's still only 1.5 credit. Okay. Yes. Uh huh. Main advantage is going to be the opportunity of taking the AP level class, which will offer you the opportunity to take the AP exam and or the dual credit. In terms of topics. Uh, our general physics is a high school general physics class. It's conceptually based more than mathematically based. And for many students, if math is not your thing, um, that's probably the one that you want to go into. But you don't have a dual credit or uh, AP exam opportunity with that course. So that's probably the main difference. Topic wise, a uh, few probably minor differences, but they're both intent, well, actually, all three. The general physics, APB and APC are intended to be year-long survey courses in the physics area. It's the math levels that really differentiate them. Okay, yes, one more over here. No, you have to have already completed calculus to go into C. Okay, I think I saw one more hand. That's probably the last question I can take. When? Uh, anytime you can work it in your schedule. If you have both to take, say if you've not had uh, chemistry, which probably about a third of you maybe fall in that category, you could take chemistry and physics the same year, junior year, if you wanted to do that. That might be a, uh, a you making faces back there? Now, now. Um, probably you would want to split it apart and then you might want to see which physics level you want to take and maybe take chemistry the junior year, delay and take physics the senior year. There's no particular order that you have to take them in. Okay, hand this back to Dr. Williams. All right, in addition to all of that, we have some additional courses that are required for every student at the academy. Two of these are junior colloquium and senior colloquium. We just call it colloq for short. Colloquium is an interesting course. It generally meets one or two days a week, depending on the time. And what it is, it's a place where students, we can pull together about 10 or 12 students and you basically explore ideas, and it's student-led. Students are graded on the quality and the quantity of their input into the discussion. And we, it's, it's based on somewhat like an interdisciplinary seminar. The topic for the junior class last year, and it may be again this year, was the world's most dangerous questions. And there was a whole series of articles that you had to read and prepare for to come to discuss. And generally, students take turns leading the discussion. It's an interesting, fascinating way to explore really interesting topics. The senior year is very much the same, but with a different set of topics. I can't recall exactly what the topics were in the senior year. But you take it two semesters, and it's usually take, it's taking the uh, second semester of your junior year and first semester of your senior year. Next, you have to take research. 
The purpose of this is we want to make sure that every student who graduates from the academy has some idea about what the research process is and how to go about it. We have alumni who, while they were here, complained about having to take research, but once they got to college, they would email us and say, thank you for making us do this, because it has helped me immensely. Now, as you can see, we have several different types of research that you can take, so you have a choice and when they're offered. General research is what most students take. And in general research, you'll identify a research topic, actually and do the research. The instructor will work with you in the different steps. And then you end with a PowerPoint presentation presenting your research. Research in humanities involves a lot of library type research. And you end up with a final research paper. Computer science research, I have no idea what they do in there, and they won't tell me. So, and if they did tell me, I probably wouldn't understand. But some of you in computer science may have an idea. Research in the sciences, is this the one that's mostly like a, do a project for, like for a science fair? Uh, you do a kind of a science fair project for research in the science. And then if you want to do further research on that, then you would take the last one, the research projects in science. So help, hopefully that kind of helps you understand what the difference is. But every student has to register for junior colloq. That al will already be on your schedule. And then you can register for one of the research classes. Also, you have to have all of these credits. Now, some of you may be missing some of those coming to the academy. Don't worry. We will find a way to get you those credits. We really don't teach these classes except for one fine arts class uh, that Mr. Meyerdurks teaches. We do have the band, we do have orchestra, we do have chorus, and Mr. Meyerdurks is going to talk about that in a moment. Health and PE, we have some arrangements with Ball State that we work and put you in a Ball State class. Did, uh, did you all talk about these in the tent? Was this a tent conversation? No? No. Oh, okay. Because these are generally handled through student life, but they are graduation requirements. Every student is expected to do 50 hours of community service. Now, this is generally done in the summers. It's very difficult to do community service given the demands of the academy during the school year. This can be volunteering to work in a hospital. This can be volunteering to work with your local humane agency. It can vary. What any other kind of, all kinds of volunteer work, it cannot be paid. Okay? When you get here, they will walk you through the process of how you uh, document your community service. Some of you may already be involved in some community service. You can count it from the day that you were admitted to the academy. You can count any academy serve, any community service. Academy service, 30 hours is service done here. And students do a lot of different things. Uh, they help at the front desk. They help in the book room. I don't know. You can name it there. We have students working to help along with the academy. Wellness is an interesting concept. What we say, there are five dimensions to this wellness. I don't know if I can name all five. I think it's emotional, cultural, intellectual, physical, What's the last one? Vocational. Thank you. Vocational. So there's five dimensions. And you have to get so many credits in each of those. And there's ways that you go about documenting those. And they will talk to you about that at the beginning of the year. You have to get so many in each. And then there's some you have to get kind of at large. And there's a total number that you have to get, 30. But these are required for graduation. And every year we have people who do not get a diploma because they have not finished one of these. So don't let it lag. Now, yes. Sure. Can they break those up? Like on the community service, I don't know if you mentioned that they do like 
Oh, yes, she's asking, can you break them up? Yes, of course, of course. You can do them throughout your two years here and uh, in the same way with academy service at any point during that two years. Sure. Now, any, any other questions about any of the courses and things that we've put up? Yes. Okay. Your computer applications, I don't know if this is a specific course you're talking about, if you have to take computer applications, it will cover the Apple operating system as well as the Microsoft Office suite. That's what will be covered. Okay. I, yeah. 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 Uh, it's, it's only a quarter class. It's not that long. And you can retake the exam at the beginning of the school year. If you want to, you, you know what's on the test now. <laughs> so retake it. We like for people to test out of it. We prefer more people test out of it. So there's, that's your options at this point. Yeah. yeah for the community service hours, uh, from now on, it will become the community service hours. You say that after they get into the school, yeah, the day you're admitted, you can start counting community service hours. From that day on. Right, and the community service can be counted. And we set uh, aside a um, display out here, and so I'm going to really answer most all those questions, so I don't waste a lot of uh, people's time today. So if uh, those are, are to be part of the BAM program, all I'm asking is that you do have your, um, your form, because you can't sign up for a class without that form being filled out. And Sam will take your name, and if there's parents that have any questions for me, then that would be the, probably the best. The band is very special here because, and, as is the chorus and the, and the orchestra, because it's made up of both Burris and Indian Academy students. Uh, we do have a, a, a booster club for the band, and, but uh, it's very hard with the parents coming from all over the state. So our band officers really have to develop leadership skills. And, and in doing so, they write the grants, et cetera, for getting our educational trip each year where we've gone to New York City, Atlanta, uh, Washington, D.C., Williamsburg, et cetera, as most bands do around the, uh, the state. We try to make it as close as possible to what you have at your other schools. We, we attend all the ISMA um, uh, soul and ensemble. Am I, am I, are, Uh, the little thing. Yes. No banders don't know those kind of things. <laughs> right here. So uh, now, for those of you that are, are not fortunate enough to be able to ever take in a band or string or sign in your group, we have a class called Criticism in the Performing Arts, and it meets at night, and uh, that's where we get you out of the academy so that you can attend performances for free on campus. It meets one day, one night a week, and there's theater, there's jazz, there's uh, orchestral, and Broadway musicals that come through Emmons Auditorium. And that's a, that's a great opportunity for everybody uh, here. But if you do take that class, you better sign up quickly because it fills up very quickly each, each year. Um, again, the vocal program is just starting, and so we hope that many of you will be interested in that. Uh, and I, like, again, I will give you all the information once we come out there. Also, uh, it was said there was only one fine arts class that was offered uh, by the Indiana Academy. There actually is two. One is called uh, Music Theory, and it's a composition class, which also covers history, uh, music history, music theory. And for those that like to do conducting, we get you involved in that area too. Hey, thank you very much. Look forward to seeing some of you outside. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, why don't we go ahead and get out your uh, junior course request form. And there, Mike. And Mr. McClure is going to walk through this with you. So if you have any questions here, this is the time to answer them. Then after that, as I said earlier, we're going to give you some time to talk as a family to begin to fill that out. And we'll be around to answer kind of any general questions that you might have. 
Now, before you leave here, on top of the piano is a written, is the written uh, calculator policy. So you know which calculators are used in which courses. So you don't have to rush up there now. They're not going anywhere. They're not going to fly off, and there's plenty of them. So at some point in time before you leave, just make sure you get a copy of the calculator policy. Sorry, I had to get hooked up with sound twice because we are vi videotaping this. I want to point out one thing that Mr. Meyerdirk said concerning the criticism for the performing arts. That class is actually called Theater Arts History. I'm, is that right? Theater, theater Arts History. We have to go by the title that's designated by the state of Indiana, and so for years it was called Theater or Criticism for the Performing Arts, but it's actually listed in the catalog as theater arts history, so make note of that in case you're trying to search for criticism and you can't find it. Need to ask, there was some comments as the cards were being passed out, if on your placement card you, had, you took a foreign language test this morning and it tells you that you placed in a completely different foreign language, would you raise your hand? Surprise! <laughs> we, we, to, we told you it was going to be tough. I think what happened, Leah put this together for us and I think she skipped a line and so I've asked her to go back and redo it. That's where I was when I left here. She has redone that so I have these. We will probably try to rerun these first, things in, first thing in the morning. I would let you know that the advisors will have the corrected version. They'll have a list of all of the students and they'll have the corrected version. But as near as we can tell, that's what happened. She skipped a line and so obviously it threw a number of people off. Um, okay, I've got some handouts up here. Again, I'm not going to ask you to come up and get them now, but let me tell you what they are so that you can come up afterwards. Down there, there's extra copies of the junior course preference form, the one that most of you are probably looking at right now. In case you need a new one to practice on or to fill out better uh, so it's easier to write, you may have scratchings and whatnot, you can pick up that. Next to that is another copy of the course registration guidelines. That was on your CD. Some of you may have picked, made a copy of that and brought it with you. You should have. You were asked to do so. But if you don't have one, there's a copy of that there. This pink copy right here is some information from Dr. Shob. It tells you about the math placement and gives you some information about that. Here is a stack of the course catalogs. We have 20 copies here. It can also be found on the, or the Indiana Academy website. Uh, you are asked to download that and bring a copy of that also, but if you did not do so, we have 20 copies. Here's something very important. I would ask that as you use these, that when you finish, please don't hang on to them forever. I'd ask that you return them to the front desk so that other parents can come up to the front desk and use them also. That's critical. We made 20 copies of these on Monday night. Four of them got back to the front desk and there were a lot of people that weren't obviously able to use them. You can see they're pretty thick. We're trying to conserve paper as much as they, we can. They're printed back to back. So I ask your cooperation in making sure that you get the copy back to the front desk. And I think those are the different files up here. All right, let's talk about this particular form. You'll notice up at the top where it says academic advisor. Your academic advisor has not been assigned yet. That's the one you will work with during the school year. We're taking those sheets that many of you have already filled out and turned in, the ones that had you rank order the disciplines and which area you like to concentrate on because we try to match you with an advisor in that particular area. We obviously don't have our advisors around during the summer, and so therefore we can't pair you up during the summer with the advisor during the advising session at orientation. Tomorrow we will have eight advisors that will work through all of you. We were able to do it on Monday in about two hours' time. We start at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Uh, those of you that live the furthest away, we will start with you and we'll go in order down through that list. 
Those of you that are closest to Muncie plan on getting to your advising appointment probably around four o'clock. So if you've got something to read, please bring it here. You can spend some time working on this form if you want to while you're waiting, but particularly those of you that live in the Hammond area, the region or down south, Evansville area, make sure that you have yours filled out so you're ready to go. We do ask that all of you have your form filled out when you go to advising. This will speed up the process considerably. Don't sit there and say, well, I'm not sure what I really want to take. What's offered in, in, in um, chemistry? We expect you to have done that before you got to the advising point tomorrow. Um, the first line is the British literature, world literature, and the Civitas, Civ 1 and Civ 2. Um, you'll take one of those each semester, so that's a given. You don't have really any choice in that area. The math placement, your math placement is available on your, um, your card that you received today. Um, again, if you have questions about your math placement, you'll need to talk with Dr. Shobe because he looked through the math placement and he verified it as okay and looking good. So that's what we gave you. So if you have questions about that, you'll need to talk with him. Uh, if you decide to take physics during your junior year, you have on your card the physics placement that is appropriate for the math level in which you placed. You would just fill in that blank. Again, remember physics is worth 1.5 credits, so you'd want to count that as one and a half credits over in the columns to your right. If you delay the physics until your senior year, just check that box there. Um, if you're not taking physics, you do need to f uh, find another science, for example, maybe AP chemistry or human anatomy and physiology, solar system. Again, you can find one. You'll need to look perhaps through the catalog or hopefully you've done that and decided what you want to take already. Um, Foreign language, let me say a little bit about that. Some of you are looking probably at your foreign language placement right now and you're saying, I can't believe I placed back into Spanish too or French too. The um, placements are national placement exams and our faculty look at the exams, they look at the placement and they have determined the cutoffs. As Dr. Williams mentioned, I noted the parents much earlier, there are a wide variety of foreign language programs across this state. Some of them very good, others of them not so good. Yes, a question back there. Um, what is the language? Yes, some of you will say on the foreign language placement it says add a second language. That means that you, that particular student did not place into, for example, we're not teaching Spanish one. And so if the student didn't place into Spanish two, they've had, let's say, one or even two years of Spanish. If they didn't place into Spanish too, then they're going to have to add a second language in order to get the two, or maybe either a second language or two languages in order to get the placement results and the credits that they need for the academic honors diploma. Yes. No, I'm sorry, she had a follow up question. I'm sorry, ma'am, I have a hearing loss and I can't hear you right now. Okay. Yes, if you had, um, talk to me later and I'll explain your situation to you. I don't want to explain it in front of everybody, okay? Yes, sir. How do you know if you got into Spanish 2 or 3? The placement will say Spanish 201, 202, or Spanish 301, 302. If it doesn't say that, and if, but if it says, if it says German, you know you're one of those people that got it wrong, so. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have the list of the right placements, so if you need to see me afterwards, I'll stick around and I'll be able to tell you what the right placement is. Like I said, we'll see if we can't get these reprinted for you in the morning first thing and get the right placements to you on the foreign language. Any other questions at this point, Brad? There's always room for band, right. Band does not count against the total number of credits, that's correct. There are other classes as well that do that. Um, PE does not, a PE course, a wellness course, health class, that kind of thing. Yes, ma'am. Kip, if, if you're taking 
that mean that the limitation is German 3? Or, and if so, why does it just say German 2? The question was, if they've taken German 1 and German 2 at their home high school, and it says add another language, I'd want to first check with you to see what the actual placement is supposed to be, according to my sheet up here. It's possible that what that means is that the student did not place into German 2. And therefore, if you've had two years of German 2 at the home high school, we would accept that as two years of German, but you would have to add a second language in order to get the third year, or to get the four, the two years of two languages. Is that clear as mud? Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. We recommend that a student take um, anywhere between, well, they need to take a minimum of six credits per semester. That's a minimum. The state requires 5.5. All students enrolled in the state of Indiana have to have at least 5.5 credit hours during a semester. We recommend that students take six. Most of our students take seven. They can take beyond that, again, depending on whether they're adding band or something else, those credits don't count. The general rule of thumb is around six and a half, seven, something like that. Um, that allows for some wiggle room in case they need to drop a class or something like that. Um, so the language, I can ask questions about that. And again, tomorrow the advisors that you're working with have done this. There, many of them already are academic advisors during the school year, and so they'll be able to assist you with it. The computer apps on your placement card says either yes or test it out. There were only five of you in this room that tested out of computer apps. All the rest of you do need to take, and I do know that those results are correct. So <laughs> your language didn't affect those. Yes? No, that's correct. There is only one computer applications class. So if it says yes, you need to circle computer computer 03301. If it says test it out, you need to circle test it out. I'm sorry? Did you say that? Oh, okay. Um, down regarding the research, you'll receive some information tomorrow. Well, you already did. I guess Dr. Williams covered the information about the research uh, down there. Notice the restriction, though, that general research, again, is only open to juniors during their spring semester. Now the electives near the bottom. If you want to take some additional courses, you've got some room and you want to get that extra English credit out of the way, you can choose an English elective. If you want to get your extra science credit, and when I say extra, I mean the fourth one. The one that, and with the Civitas, you've got the three Civitas and you've got to take a fourth social, social science. If you wanted to get that out of the way now, you could put that down in either fall or spring, any of those times. Again, calculate the number off to the side. Again, if you don't, if you're not sure how many to count, don't worry about that. The advisor can do that tomorrow. What other specific questions do you have regarding filling this form out? Good, good hint. The foreign language is worth 1.25. So make a note of that foreign language. You could write that in right now, 1.25. Yes, ma'am, right there. If you've already taken physics at your home high school, you, could, you have the option of taking AP physics if you want to, but if you've taken it, you're officially done with physics. And so you wouldn't have to take it because you've already met that requirement, providing you passed it, and I assume you did. <laughs> That's correct. That's another thing. Be sure that it was a straight physics class. Some of you have taken a, the integrated chemistry physics I saw that on transcripts that I reviewed with incoming applicants. That does not count at the academy as either a chemistry or a physics. It's a totally different breed, and so you have to take chemistry and physics. Any other questions? Yes? The question was, if you have to take like a Ball State class, for example, if you need a PE credit, what would you put down? You could just write down there at the bottom because we don't have necessarily a designation or, 
catalog. Yeah, in the catalog, it's, it's listed as wellness or PE, and there's some numbers. Again, if you don't know the numbers, don't worry about it. Put the name of the course. That'll work just as well. We'll sort it all out later. Yes? Mm -hmm. Say it a little bit louder. Okay, the question is, if you've already taken two years of one language, but you placed back into the second year of that language, you have some options. Oh, people are moving. <laughs> can can you all wait till I'm done? Thank you. Um, the question again was if you took two years of a language and you placed back into the second year of that language, you have an option. You can take the two years that you've had at your home school and consider yourself done with that language and then take, pick up another language for two years, a brand new one. Or you can take, and since you placed into the second year of that language, you would need to retake the second year and then go on to the third year during your senior year and get the three years of the one language. Get my fingers up here right. The three years of the one language. Otherwise, you can take the two years of the one that you came in with and add two more for the two years of two languages. Yes, sir. Taking more than one language what? At once. at once. The question was, can you take more than one language at once? You can, uh, if you're really, really good at languages. We have students that do it, um, especially if you have to do the two years of two languages, and it says take two, two languages. If you're just a language fiend and you want to do that, well, knock yourself out, I guess. <laughs> um, but make sure you discuss that with your academic advisor tomorrow. Yeah, again, uh, Dr. Pentecost, who you met this afternoon that was here talking just a little while ago, she is one of the advisors tomorrow. If you have a question, even though you might not be advising with her, feel free to ask her questions about that. I think we do make arrangements to sometimes take a placement test over again. Good question. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, athletics does work because when we're putting the schedule together, we would like to have a placeholder. If we know that you're going to be involved in a certain sport, we need to know that because then we try to arrange your classes so that you don't have a classes during the later afternoon and early evening because that's when the sporting practices and the events occur. So there'll be a pla there is a place um, up there where it's near the top where it says if you play sports, and I can see it's really garbled, so I'm not sure. If you plan to participate in sports and the letters are all crammed together, you need to put it in that spot. Uh, the advisors have a list of what sport is considered or in, in practice or going on to what particular time, whether it's a small fall sport, a spring sport, etc. So, and then we'll put in the placeholder if you acknowledge that so that you don't get classes scheduled during the times when the sports take place. Yes. It's not set in stone after tomorrow because for one thing, what you're going to do tomorrow is you're doing your preferences. You're doing your requests. It's very possible that you won't get all of your requests. And the reason for that, particularly on some of the electives, now I can guarantee you will get your British and World Lit, or I'm sorry, your World Lit and your American Lit. You will get your Civitas because juniors aren't the only ones in those classes. Let's say, for example, though, that you might want anatomy and physiology. The or you'll have to remember that the seniors are involved and have their requests in. And we build the schedule first around the seniors, but we give them first priority on something. Your turn will come for that next year, obviously. So these are preferences 
There is a time during the first five days of the semester when we do a drop ad period, but we like to keep those as much to a minimum as we can, of course. Your friends are going to wonder what happened, why are you coming back, and you may make up some wonderful cover story, but nine out of ten times, guys, this is the opportunity that you wish you would have had. This is the opportunity you look back on when you can't come back here and you want to come back here. You don't realize sometimes what this place will mean to you until you throw it away. And I know it sounds real heavy to end on, but I want you guys to understand, major violations, they're not things to mess around with, so please use your brain and be smart. I just, I cannot stress that enough. And sometimes. Sometimes I just have to let you guys know the responsibility does fall on you to make those decisions. You are away from home. Sometimes you would hope that mom or dad are really close by, but sometimes they're a little bit further away, and so you have to make that decision for yourself. Hopefully they've done right by you as far as parenting, and now it's on you guys to make those decisions and make them proud. So please, 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 please do that. Okay. And we've reached pretty much the end of our presentation, guys. Um, we have about five minutes if you guys have any questions. And then I'm going to go through the rest of the evening. We'll head back, have some snacks, have some fun times, and stuff like that. Are there questions? Yes, ma'am. For study sessions, are those in our rooms or are those in like a lab or something? Good question. She asked if study sessions are in the lounge or if they're in their rooms or whatnot. Study session is in your room. It's with your roommate. Um, you will both be in a study session. That's why the headphones are our big component as far as not having a lot of noise pollution carrying down the hallway. The doors will not be able to be closed all the way. Okay, so that's why noise can also carry down the hallway. Um, as far as in the room, you're supposed to be studying, working on stuff. We can't make you read the page that you're putting up in front of you, but we're really hoping that you utilize that time. Yes? Can you read books during study session? Can you read books during study session? Um, we will ask if you have something to be working on, and we would ask that you work on that. As far as if that book is for class or not, um, we're honestly probably not going to know all the time, um, but I really would test that. If you have all your homework done legitimately, um, We'll, we'll be a little bit flexible with you when it comes to stuff like that. You'll need to be quiet and you'll need to be in and you still follow study session until you can let a love of privilege out. Um, but we would ask if you have homework, and even if it's a long-term project, we ask that you be working on that instead of reading the book. Good question, though. Yes, ma'am. Oh, wait, hold on. What happens if one student's on yellow card and one student's on pink card in the same room? Good question. <laughs> That's a great question. Um, if one person in the room is in study session, the room is in study session. Um, so you have to understand that, that that's also an important component about your roommate. If you have one of those roommates that they just love being on pink card, they want to be on pink card for the rest of their day, for no apparent reason, your room's going to be a study session. Now you may, not, you may not want that roommate next year, but he has to say, just keep that in mind. Um, it doesn't mean if you're, if you're out of study session, you can go down to the lounges, you can go down to the public areas and enjoy watching the house at 9 o'clock or your other friends are in study session or you know, do that kind of stuff. So just, just be aware that those are some privileges that do come along with that. Good question. Yes, ma'am. Do you still have questions? King answered it. Awesome. <laughs> Other questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, when and where do we get the forms that you guys were talking about? When and where do I get the forms you were talking about? Um, depending on which forms, the gold forms, uh, travel forms will be handed out at uh, the when you guys arrive as far as in August. Um, we'll be handing those out so your parents can fill out the white forms and gold forms. You can get each time you go to leave. We'll have a huge stack of them, so we'll just pull a new one out so you can fill it out right there on the spot. Um, as far as the Academy Service Forms, they're nearby the front desk. The Community Service Forms, you can download off the website, and that's what we encourage you to do. As far as wellness, you'll just send us an email saying you went, and then we'll send you an email back saying we recorded it. And the same thing as far as for, um, I don't know what I'm going to say, but yes, there you go, sorry. <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, can you ever lose a privilege level? Can you ever lose a privilege level? Yes. Privilege levels are generally tied to, while also with wellness and academic service, you have to be in good academic standing. Academic standing will be the quickest way to send you uh, back down to the privilege system. So, um, yes, if you find that you get out of space session, woohoo, and then you decide that you're always watching house instead of doing your homework, um, you find out you need to low grades, you're not going to be watching house next semester. You're going to be back in study session. It could be midterm and you have poor grades, you could be going back into study session. So yes, um, you can also petition back up to where you were if you get your grades up, but you generally, if you fall back, you fall all the way back and then you can try to bounce back up if you show that you've been able to manage the time properly. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, 
the back and we'll do the front. Sorry. What's the petitioning thing? The petitioning is just basically when you can act, actually move up through the level system. So petitioning is um, for you guys to be at the beginning of second semester is when you guys can petition up and out of study session onto the yellow card and your privileges will change. For seniors um, or juniors second semester midterm, you guys will have another opportunity to um, move up at midterm. But ju juniors are not able to do that their very first semester here because we want to get you guys off on the right foot with study session with some of the earlier curfews. And so once you show that you can manage your time, we then give you kind of more privileges and that's why you can petition for that. Yes, sir? I was going to ask how often can you petition? Yeah, he asked how often you can petition. As far as minus your junior first semester, um, it's every quarter, basically you could petition up, theoretically. Now, there are, like I said, ceilings on these. As juniors, the highest you can go is yellow. Um, for seniors, the highest you can go is blue. And depending on when and where you are on the track, you can move up based on your grades and, and the uh, wellness and academic service that you have. So that's a good question. There's a form you fill out for that, and you'll just have to go to the front desk. You do have to get your advisor signing off a minute saying you're an academic good standing. You have to have your SLC, which is one of us, sign off on it saying you've done all of your like residential life stuff to be able to move up and you also have to have a parent signature to move up so i know last year i had a parent they just really did not want their junior off the pink card she sat on the pink card the entire school year because her parents just weren't quite ready they didn't think that she was quite ready and mature enough to move up to yellow so that'll be have to be a discussion between you and your parents and if your parents think you're mature enough to move up in that because their signature is on that form as well